The food pyramid is wrong? What? Welcome to the Joyous Expansion Podcast. I'm your host, Brett Dupree, scouring the globe to bring you stories of courage, passion, and resilience. If I could sum up this podcast into one word, I would use empathy. Now let's get inspired. Welcome to the Joyous Expansion Podcast. I am your host once again, Brett Dupree. Today, our interview was Jackie Walburn, someone who's passionate about eating right and healthy. Well, now is the part of my podcast where I talk about my life because if I am not vulnerable, how can I expect my guests to be vulnerable? It's been one week since she looked at me. Just kidding. I don't know why that song popped up in my head. It's been, of course, one week since I've recorded a podcast, and I've been pretty proud of myself. I have been pretty on point in the last few podcasts, about, you know, eight weeks now or more. I don't know. I Again, I need to look these up before I make statements, but I don't. Off the cuff, speaking from the heart, all that jazz. I have been keeping up on my podcast, but that does make me think i've been doing good with my light worker toastmasters but also that makes me think about my health especially since i've had a cough and my cough is about six to eight weeks old and i believe it should be going away by now so i'm gonna see a doctor about that on friday looking at webmd i either have acute bronchitis and it's just lasting a little longer than normal but it generally sticks around about six weeks i have developed an allergy of some kind or i am dying of cancer that is the joy of using webmd to in any online form to diagnose yourself. But I think it's an acute bronchitis because it started when I got sick. And then it just felt like that part of the sickness stayed around. We'll see on Friday. Hopefully, it'll be good news. Like, it's just you're a little sick and it's taking a little longer this time. But, of course, that made me think about my health, especially because two weeks ago I was feeling very not good. I was just eating too much. That's what happens sometimes in my life when things get too much. I eat too much. And so I have decided to focus on my weight again as I feel like the Lightworker Toastmasters and pretty much everything else is actually bottoming out. Not bottoming out. It's, I've reached a point of growth where it's not that hard, where doing this podcast isn't overwhelming well even doing my sunday podcast the church of awesome podcast is not overwhelming everything is just fitting right as it is even though i haven't made the church of awesome.com yet i plan on doing that sunday i don't think i have any plans this sunday but the important thing is yeah so i've done two diabetes one for four months one for six months and one for four weeks and so far i am doing well towards my goal even though it started just as all-time high so to make it easy so I just made it easy. But at the same time, I think I'm going to reach the goal. And I've made a personal decision that if I don't reach the goal, I'm going to take advantage of something at my work, which is shakes and food. And then you buy fruits and vegetables. I don't think it would work for me because I eat a lot. And my problem isn't food choices. It's emotional eating. But we'll see. Hopefully I got it. Hopefully I got it. It's all about mindset. I've been working on my mindset for years. And maybe finally I'm getting to the point where I can do more things. And I've grown in that capacity because willpower is bull i've learned the more decisions you make during your life or your time during your day the less willpower you actually have it's just the mind only has so much energy and so the idea of course is you just try to make that decision before so one thing i want to mention is that it's hot this is my least favorite part about the podcast which is recording myself because i love talking but when it's hot i have to turn off my fan on my desk I have to close the window so no noise from outside comes in. These blue Yeti microphones are actually really nice. I am in my front room. You can't hear the refrigerator in the background because it just picks up sound really well. So I highly suggest blue Yeti microphones. I think they're great. If I knew how to make my voice sound better through the equalizers, my voice would probably sound better. But at the same time, it's not the mic. The mic is beautiful you got the cool one with the stand and the shock absorber it is it is fantastic so that's pretty much part of my life is not only that a lot of it is listening to an interview that i did last week that actually touched me and i'm looking forward to sharing that one but it's talking about being happy where you are now because you're kind of fighting against yourself when you're trying to improve from the sense that you're not already where you should be and this got me thinking, you know what? I love my body. And when I work out in a sense that I love my body, it's better than working out in a sense that I need to lose weight. Also been playing a lot of board games lately. My girlfriend is enjoying board games, which is making me very happy. 
I just loved how happy and competitive she got. So I just want to throw that out there. And I know she likes it when I mention her because it makes her feel special because she is. Speaking of special, our next guest is Jackie Walburn, a person who is very passionate about food. And I am excited to share her passion with you. Jackie Walburn is a health transformation engineer. She designs deliciously effective personal programs to empower you to take back control of your life with better health, energy, and vitality using real, whole, targeted dietary protocols, foods, nutritional, botanical, and lifestyle focusing on root cause resolutions. Despite having a BS in nutrition, Jackie found herself fearful of her own downward spiral, failing health with 15 different conditions, including stage four kidney disease, fatty liver disease, diabetes, obesity, arthritis, emphysema, allergies, depression, chronic fatigue, systemic candida overgrowth, and the list goes on. After conventional medicine has no answers, she turned to research only to realize that everything she has learned in her dietetic program was now outdated old paradigm. This was devastating and empowering as possibilities now existed by eliminating her own limiting belief systems. Once she applied this new research knowledge, she reversed all her conditions and took back control of her health. She started by detoxing, which reversed 40 years of arthritic pain, allergies, and edema in 30 or so days. She has successfully helped her clients through her free speaking presentations, one-on-one coaching program with weight loss, resistance, blood sugar issues, eczema, arthritis, candida, hormone imbalances, gut issues, allergies, fatty liver disease, kidney disease, even reversing one client's Parkinson's by 80%. And who knows how many others are listening right now. Here is my interview with Jackie Walburn. Hello, Jackie, and welcome to my podcast. Oh, thank you so much. I am so honored to be here. This is fabulous. I am honored to have you. Yes. So it says here that you are a health transformational engineer. How did you discover that? I started off as a nutritionist, and then I specialized my process further and decided to be a condition-specific nutritionist and lifestyle coach. People were questioning that particular choice of titles. And so when I explained what I do, somebody said, well, you're a health transformation engineer because you design programs, personalized programs to successfully reverse and transform people's health by using food, nutritionals, target supplements and botanicals and such. And they said, "This, you're actually an engineer. And it's like, Wow, what a great idea. So I went with it. So what got you into nutrition and health? I started off, this is what I have my bachelor's degree in from college. I wanted to be a doctor. That path did not come to fruition. And so I wanted to continue to help people. I wanted to find a way to help people. And being a foodie person, I figured, you know what? I'm going to go into nutrition so that I can be part of a healthcare team and to help people get healthier by using food as medicine. That's not what it was called back then, but that's what I wanted to do. So got my degree in nutrition, got a minor in microbiology, which was something I was passionate about as well. It took me a while to get to where I am now because life throws you curves and you make choices. And I ended up being a high school biology teacher for many years and teaching nutrition in that class, as well as all the other curriculum that goes with college prep biology. My passion always was nutrition. The only thing in your bio is just fixing this one thing, but I think this one thing being your poor health. Can you tell us about your poor health struggles? Oh my gosh, this is where it's important for your listeners to understand and be able to address their own journeys. When I hit menopause, my health started to fail tremendously, and I was in a very quick downward spiral with 15 conditions, and it was actually kidney disease. I was in stage four kidney disease along with liver, fatty liver disease. I had diabetes. I was obese. I was gaining weight like crazy, couldn't explain it. Hormone imbalances, eczema, allergies, asthma, arthritis, 40 years, just kept, everything just kept piling on me. And it just got to the point five years ago where I basically had five years to live. And conventional medicine had nothing, nothing for me except for just a declining life based on drugs. And it was just, I finally just threw my hands up and said, that's enough. 
I something else has to be done. I have to go a different direction. This is not right. My body is not betraying me. Something else is going on here. The body wants to heal and I have to move in a different direction. And that's when I started seeking the truth. And I found it and reversed it all. I had 15 different conditions and I reversed it all. Now I'm trying to help. Now I am helping other people in my business to actually do the same thing and to come to the same conclusions and to be able to take back their health, take control of their health and actually regain all of their vitality, all of their health, get rid of all of their medications, get off of everything and just have a vibrant, healthy, thriving life for the rest of their days. So it sounds to me that you spent most of your life really into nutrition, but also spent a decent amount of it not following all of the things that you learned? Oh, no. I followed everything I learned to the T. But the problem was it was all a lie. Everything that I was taught in my nutrition program in college was actually based on faulty science. And, you know, we all learned the food pyramid only to find out now that that was faulty science and that it was completely made up. It's a whole construct that has just been pushed on us into our belief system that is not valid. It's all a construct that's been made up. And so once I learned that and I had to re-examine all of the scientific work out there and find out what actually was going on and what actually is a healthy diet and then changed my diet, everything went away. So that must have been frustrating going through the life thinking that you're doing the right thing and then still not seeing those results happening. Oh my gosh. You know, and I'm sure that some of your listeners will completely identify with this. I had just decided along the way with everything I was going through that basically God hated me and that I was put on this earth for this life to suffer and go through pain and to have to be this way and that my body was betraying me and that I had nothing, I had no power or anything to change it. That was my construct. That was my belief system at that time. And I really believed that that's where I was. And I basically gave up. I just figured this is who I am. This is where I'm going. This is what it is. Until I finally said, you know what? I don't believe this anymore. And I refuse to accept these diagnoses. I refuse to take them on. And I'm going to heal myself. I just had to take charge and heal myself. So yes, it was quite a journey, quite a betrayal of information. And again, it's all a construct that we have to recognize that it's a belief system that has been pushed on us that isn't necessarily true. So what's the biggest lie in the food pyramid? Well, the food pyramid in itself is the lie because it's completely been turned upside down since. What I learned and what most of us learned and what I was still teaching at the beginning of my high school biology teacher time frame was that the food pyramid was that we were supposed to have a heavy grain diet. So the bottom of the food pyramid was grains. That's all your wheat products, all your breads, your pastas, so on and so forth. Cookies, muffins, etc. are all were on the bottom. The problem is that all of our health crisis currently is based on this error. Some people with some different gene expressions can handle the large amount of grains, very few. But for most of us with our ancestry, huge amounts of grains are toxic to us and actually are causing most of our health problems. So the grains now on the new food pyramid are all the way at the top in the limited section, where now the bottom of the pyramid consists of huge amounts of vegetables and healthy fats. The low fat craze is over. It's all been debunked. The cholesterol, heart disease connection has all been debunked. It's all a lie. It's all constructs that were made up for us with faulty scientific data. And so now we're at the bottom of the food pyramid being nothing but vegetables and healthy fats. And then your fruits and your proteins above that. Dairy is also now moved to the top of the pyramid as in occasional. So it's a complete shift of everything that we learned. And this is what people need to know is that all of their health crisis and all of their health conditions 
are based on this faulty information and they need to reevaluate this and they need to look at all the data or they can search out someone who can help them go through it so that they can understand that this is not where you need to be and that to get all of the fiber and everything else that our body needs and to feed our microbiome, we need huge amounts of vegetables in our diet. Lots and lots of diversity of good, healthy vegetables. What was it like learning that everything you learned for so long was a lie? Well, you know, again, it was very frustrating and very awakening to my soul and my spirit to be able to actually say, this is what has gone wrong. This is not my body betraying me. This is not God hating me. This is not all these other different constructs that I invented. And just to go, aha, here's the truth. And it's like, oh my God, I need to let other people know because they don't know. It's like really hard to see people in the grocery store buying all the soda and buying all these chips and all these crackers and all these cookies and all this bread and just going to myself, my heart is crying saying, no, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't you know what you're doing to yourself? And it's, I can't do that because I doesn't go over well. I tried. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, learning that so much of our lives are just made up beliefs that don't actually exist and that we hold in our past that are we're pulling into our forward and that we need to reevaluate these man-made laws, so to speak, and to actually look at the truth and to be able to be open to those things. And it was a huge step for me. I did have a life coach that really helped me with this because I was really having, I really struggled with this because here I am so proud of having my degree in nutrition and to find out that it was all a construct made up on faulty science was really hard for me to, to get past. And I needed help to be able to do that. And now I am totally free. I am so joyous and full of life and full of energy and thriving and added 20 something years to my lifespan at this point. It's just, and I just have to share it with the universe. I have to share it with everyone and just have to bring them into this new awakening and to move forward into their own health journey to recognize that they do have control and they can do something about it. And they don't have to rely on the construct of conventional doctors that have no training in this. That would be the next thing I would want people to understand is that doctors, we put them on this pedestal that they have all this information and they don't. They have their own construct of what they've been taught and they're limited to their own belief system that they know how to help people when they don't because they're limited to their training, which is just, they are master diagnosticians. Let's call them that. Their job is to diagnose based on the symptoms you have and the blood work that they've done and to look at all of that and say, aha, this is what you have and to diagnose you. And then turn to the standard of care playbook for all doctors and give you a prescription for whatever it is that is your diagnosis. They aren't even allowed to. They will lose their license if they try to give you nutritional therapy and they don't have the background to do it. Doctors don't get any nutrition in their med school. They don't get any unless they opt for an elective to have a one-day class. That's it. So they have no idea that food is medicine. They have no idea that the food pyramid's been turned upside down. They don't know that the three major causes of all diseases that run from nutritional deficiencies to toxins to low-grade infections are at the culprit of all of our inflammation causing all of our chronic diseases. They don't know that. They've never been trained in that. They haven't spent hours and hours doing research to find this out. And once you learn this, then you know what you have to do. So many of our diseases and many of our conditions, all the chronic ones anyway, are straightforward, those three causes. And if you address those three causes you give your body you nurture it with what it needs and it will heal your body wants to thrive your body wants to heal if you give it what it needs it will do it for you and you can heal yourself one thing that you talked about which i find i forgot the name of it but 
this every time you learn something and especially when you go deep it as you did, it becomes part of your identity. And sometimes learning about something that is against your identity actually causes physical pain. The part where you hired a coach to help you through this, can you elaborate a little bit more on that, on the transition? Well, you know, the interesting part was that I originally, when I started my journey trying to find my to find my truth and to find out what was going on with me. I first started with going to a holistic chiropractor who specialized in detoxing. And that was the first part was to actually pull all the toxins out of my body. That was really quite a journey to go through. But I meet, within 30 to 60 days, I started healing in different areas. And so then that challenged my construct where I was actually went, wait a minute. So what else isn't true in my belief system? And I went to a life coach thinking that actually what I went to the life coach for was because I was having depression, anxiety, and panic attacks, and irritability, and anger management issues was the reason. And my brother recommended this life coach that he knew. And when I went to see him, that's when I started opening up my belief systems to all of the constructs and recognizing that I shouldn't take everything that I ever learned at face value. And it was like, Oh my God, it just opened up a whole nother world of possibilities to me and getting out of the box that I had shoved myself into and didn't fit in and was able to actually move past that. And I didn't really have any real anger issues about it. I mean, it was some anger, but it was also very liberating to know that it wasn't me, that it wasn't my body, it wasn't my betrayal, it wasn't inside me. It wasn't my destiny to be able to actually get past that and say, wait a minute, I have options here. I have choice. That was liberating. So even though it it was very frustrating and even anger about all of the, the belief systems and all of the information and the constructs that I had learned and that I was clinging to, it was also very freeing to know that I had the ability to make choices and to move past that into other possibilities. So instead of sitting on the anger, I embraced the possibilities and moved forward through it and let it go past through me and not settle in me. So I didn't actually have a lot of time with anger, with learning this new information and being able to open myself up to it and learn the possibilities of choice. So I moved right past it. It was actually pretty relevating to actually do that nice there's just something magical about getting help from others oh my gosh yes i couldn't have gone my full journey without him it was transformational the interesting part that i had a discussion with him when i first started seeing him i was in the beginning of my health journey and we were talking about all of the life purposes looking at i tried to explain to him that as long as you have a body purpose problem, it's very difficult to work on your other life purposes or to even find your life purpose to move forward because you're so focused and so distracted by my health is failing, my health is failing, I don't feel well, I'm tired all the time, I have anxiety, I have depression, I have all these other things, I am overweight, how can I do this? And all these things around that. Once I focused on my body purpose and made my body purpose to actually take back my health and take control of it and take responsibility for it, then once my body started to respond to that, it was so all the rest of the body, all the rest of the life purposes just flowed out of me and just became so inspiring and so uplifting. And I can't believe where I am now with so much light and so much love and so much joy through in my soul, my spirit, everything about me is just so fantabulous, my favorite word, that it's just like I never knew I could feel this good. I never knew I could have so much joy. I never knew that I could feel so much freedom and so much possibility. And I just, I never knew it was there. It was absolutely, it's been such an incredible journey. So it makes it sound like the bottom of the living your life pyramid is your body. 
<laughs> yes, actually, for me. I mean, other people have other issues, I'm sure, as far as their purposes go, where they're stuck. But I find that most of the people that I that come to me for their body purpose for actually taking back control of their health, once they start moving down this path, all the other things start to fall into place. It's very important. And I think for me, my personal belief system is at this point that it is should be a priority for all life coaches to go for this one first, because we have an epidemic here in the United States of the people's health is failing and there's so much around this. Our current nutrition information is wrong. Our everything in our big agricultural and pharmaceutical industry is toxic to us. And we don't understand that our the antibiotics that we've been told all our lives are good for us are actually destroying our health by killing off our microbiome that we cannot exist without and that compromised microbiome when you take anti means against, biotic means life, it kills all the bacteria in your microbiome. And I don't know if your listeners understand at this point that you are only 10% human cells. The other 90% of your existence is bacterial cells and viruses and fungus that live within you that actually speak to our DNA and actually turn your genes on and off without having the food that they need to survive, your microbiome fails and it turns on bad genes and it feeds the bad microbiome, the bad bugs that actually can cause your health issues. When you change your diet, you change your life. The antibiotics are killing off the microbiome that we need and opening up our system to overgrowth and lowering our immune function so that we can have low-grade infections. The number one low-grade infection that people have is candida, which is a fungal overgrowth. Huge numbers of people actually are testing positive for this. They're finding that many diabetics who get tested by functional medicine doctors have a huge candida overgrowth. Most of your dementia, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's people also have a candida overgrowth. I had systemic candida overgrowth, which means that it actually moved through my gut lining and into my bloodstream and was circulating everywhere in my body. And Fungus actually produces huge amounts of toxins that can actually cross the blood-brain barrier, limit your bacterial in your intestines, in your microbiome that can actually cause you all sorts of mental conditions, can cause you all sorts of sugar dysregulation, cause hormone disruption. They feed on heavy metals and other toxins. It's just incredible where this all goes. If you're not living your life to nourish your body and to take care of the physical house that you were given and giving it what it needs to thrive, then everything starts to collapse as far as what your body is able to do. And it does get in the way of your mind. Most people don't realize that their emotions can be controlled. All of your good neurotransmitters for your brain are actually produced, most of them anyway, I think it's 90% is what they're currently estimating, are actually produced by the good bacteria in your gut. But if you take like antibiotics, you're going to kill off those things. And so now your brain's not getting what it needs. And now it's getting all these flood of toxins coming in that actually compromises your mental abilities. So what has been your favorite transformation you've seen so far? Ooh, well, you know, actually, since I actually went through a belief system of because of my physical health failing, et cetera, and everything that I was going through, I mean, I was diagnosed with arthritis at age 12. And so I really, I lived 40 years in constant pain. And I really thought that my spiritual belief system was completely challenged because I really actually concluded with everything that was going on with my health that God hated me and that I was here to suffer and that I must have committed some kind of big sin in another life or something that I was paying for in this life. I didn't have any other explanation, so I made up a belief. When I actually was able to reverse my health and go, 
now I can have my spiritual beliefs. Now I can say, oh my gosh, I have all of this because I can embrace my spirituality and I can see the big picture and the collective consciousness and to know that I am part of something bigger than myself and that I have a purpose in the direction of this life and that I have a message that I want to share with the world and that I have all these gifts that I can bring to people and it's just changed everything for me to be able once I got my body purpose and my health back then I could actually I went after my spirituality as another the next thing that I felt blocked and that was huge to be able to actually feel my my spirit grow and expand outwards and to be able to connect and touch every single living thing on the planet, even non-living things. I feel like now that my spirit has grown to a point where I am actually touching the universe. And it's such an incredible feeling of awe to be able to feel that I am expanded out that far and touching everything and being a part of the creation. This is a big, huge point of all of the joy and everything that I have in my life at this point. So we're getting to the end of our interview. One thing I like to ask people is to give one minute of motivation. You can imagine this is something like getting a time machine and transporting yourself down to your eight-year-old self and telling yourself the, you only have one minute to convey everything you need to live a good life or just condensing your life message down to a minute. Here is what I would tell myself and everyone else out there. It is not your fault. You are not your diagnosis. No one can tell you what you could heal. It is all doable. Love yourself from the outside in by giving your body what it needs to nourish it, and it will love you back from the inside out. Nice. Thank you so much, Jackie Walburn. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I'm hoping that we can spread all this love and joy out to everyone. Well, I hope your day is special. Oh, always. Every single day is special. Every single day is a gift. Every single day is a, a chance to spread more joy and love to the world. Didn't you feel that passion, folks? There is somebody who's passionate about helping people with food. That is Jackie Walburn for you. She also sent me some other things she has done for herself after she did that detoxing she was very open to the possibilities of what could occur she decided to experiment on herself because she was still having trouble believing this new paradigm which she would try one protocol and did it about 60 days in between first thing she did after that was gluten-free which caused her to lose 20 pounds in 30 days waited 60 free 60 days later did grain free then lost another 20 pounds isn't that cool then she went for just a plain old organic ketogenic diet for another 20 pounds in 60 days. And then her blood sugar and AC1 rapidly declined. Isn't that cool, folks? And then she ended up doing a dairy-free keto for another 30 to lose finally 90 pounds remissing her diabetes and rust in just over a year. And after that, she left her job. She sought out a light coach like me to work out her issues and past limiting beliefs. And yeah, now she realizes that she wants to share this information all over the world because overcoming fear is crucial. I'm happy she took that leap of faith and quit her security of her teaching job and pursued her lifelong dream because that is what's important, folks, when you are ready, when you have your why to pursue your dream. And she did that to by creating her own business, helping other people heal themselves with this idea that food is medicine and healing people's leaky gut, which I've heard a lot and I still don't really understand. Maybe I should read up on that. Another cool thing I learned about her after the interview is she got... She updated her education by attending the Integrative Medicine Academy to obtain a gastrointestinal mastery certification. Your gut is important, folks. Your gut is important. We are mostly bacteria, and a lot of that bacteria is in our gut. I truly believe in the next 20 or so years, we're actually going to see more protocols of gut healing, and those fecal transfers are going to be just part of daily life because... Our gut bacteria is very important. And for her to do that and to learn, I mean, it's hard. It's hard to switch your paradigm. I was listening to a podcast on Monday, the Cracked Podcasts. I enjoy them. And they're talking about 
phrases that we get wrong. And one person brought up this phrase because she learned about the the saying when you are, don't want to say it because of the word's meaning, but it's like you got ripped off, but a derogatory term for the Roma people, also known as, I think, gypsy. I don't know if that's derogatory or not, but that's shorter. And she didn't realize that after someone called her out, she didn't realize that was a slur. And she had this moment, this moment in time. Actually, it was when she was younger. And she didn't realize Mexicans were from Mexico. They thought there was just a group of people, like jocks, nerds, Mexicans. She didn't have a realization that Mexicans were people from Mexico. It was because she's young. And sometimes when you're young, you have that. And then one day when there was a immigration issue and a lot of the people who she just knew as Mexicans part of the Mexican group were being deported and in that moment she realized that wait a second these people are actually from Mexico they're not just the Mexican group like there's no jock land you can't send people back to jockey jocklandia or nerdtopia but these people can be sent back to Mexico And at that moment, she recognized that that was a defining moment in her life where she can either recognize that what she thought was wrong all that time and dangerous and painful and feel that embarrassment, that stupidity, or double down and just go on the attack. Because one thing I learned from Adam Ruins Everything is this idea that when you take up an idea, uh, you can become part of your identity. Once it becomes part of your identity, to hear an idea that's opposite of it causes physical pain. And at that moment, she decided that she was going to feel that embarrassment and not, you know, become racist against Mexicans. I know I have done that. I grew up in the 80s. So, yeah, everything I didn't like was uh, I used (laughs) I used the term gay for derogatory thing i didn't mean negative things towards gay people but at the same time if i didn't like something i would say it was gay and also did the thing where i said the f word for derogatory towards a derogatory towards gay people a lot that's what we did in the 80s we were i didn't mean i hated gay people but at the same time once i recognized what i was doing when someone confronted me about it part of me did want to double down i didn't want to cause people pain and i could become angry But instead, I decided to feel that embarrassment and change my life and work on improving myself and take away those words. Happened to me with the word midget, trying trying not to say that, and other words that I'm learning that more and more people are disliking. And just using new words, because that's what we can do. But basically, the idea is one thing Jackie learned, she went to school for that and was able to change her life that way. And so Jackie is somebody that you can truly work with especially if you are stuck in that old paradigm of the old food pyramid if you're someone who believes in that bs of calories in calories out which i'm so freaking sick of that is most useless advice i have ever heard where else in anything i mean you don't become smarter you don't tell someone to become smarter it's more information in than more information out you don't tell someone to become rich it's more money in than more money out less money out but for some reason weight is calories in calories out like we are that simple machines but in the fact i can make five sandwiches exactly the same and the various of calories could be over two to 300 to even 500 calories from one sandwich to another. And I'm supposed to count calories? That is just wrong. That is just wrong. And Jackie was able to break that paradigm. So if you want to work with someone who's able to have broke that old paradigm, Jackie can be found everywhere on the internet with her own website, realhealthsounds.com. So realhealth, S-O-L-N-S.com. And listings on Google, Yelp, Bing, LinkedIn, NurseDoc.com wellnessuniverse.com and more she also has a book heal thyself naturally on amazon.com she's offering a free email consultation through her website's contact page so there you have it folks that is this week's episode i am your host once again brett dupree the champion of authentic joy catalyst of transformation joyous expansion life coach as well as the grand poobah cult leader of the church of awesome my other podcast check out it's on step seven stones radio hopefully this sunday you can check out the church of awesome.com for more information on that 
Like and subscribe to wherever you're listening to this. Share it. Give me a review. Reviews help a lot. Even checking the stars helps a lot. If you want to contact me for any reason and ask me a question, email me at bre2ts, d-u-p-r-2-e's at joyousexpansion.com. Also check out joyousexpansion.com for all of your Brett Dupree needs of learning who I am and what I do. And also I have a free gift for you, so I hope you like it. This is the 29th episode. Hooray! I'm excited about that and I'm excited about you. And because you listen through this, I automatically love you for who you are. So once again, I remind you to be love, to be joy, to be awesome. Now play my jingle. JoyousExpansion.com JoyousExpansion.com Come and say hello to Brad Dupree. He is an inspirational life coach Good for you and good for me He turned my life from grey to blue I'm sure he'll do the same for you Get in touch and you'll see Your life will change dramatically JoyousExpansion.com JoyousExpansion.com Yeah